Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matthew Peters. I just finished my first year in the material science department at Northwestern University. And I'm here today to talk about cooking up new materials. Now, one of my favorite shows to watch nowadays is Chopped. For those of you who haven't seen it, a group of chefs are pinned against each other to see who can create the best dish. But there's a twist. They're given a seemingly random basket of ingredients that they must use in order to create a truly unique and different dish. It's pretty incredible to see how these chefs use their skills, knowledge, and intuition to predict how each of these ingredients interact with each other. On a recent episode, a group of chefs were given a basket that contained paste or puff pastry, cuttlefish, and tequila. And using these ingredients, they made a delicious looking dish. I know that if I were in this position, my dish could only serve as a replacement for getting your stomach pumped. And the job of many material scientists is to create new materials. But the truth is, is that when they're in the lab creating new materials, they're acting exactly like chefs in the kitchen. But instead of using ingredients such as flour, sugar, or cuttlefish, they're using the elements from the periodic table. These include hydrogen, oxygen, and silicon, to name a few. Now, just as a chef will taste the recipe, slowly tweaking its ingredients until it's satisfied with their taste, a material scientist will test their material's properties, such as strength or toughness, slowly tweaking its recipe until it's satisfied with its properties. Now, I want you to all imagine a world. A world where a recipe asks you to bake a cake for two weeks. Or what about a recipe that asks you to add a gold bar to it? Every single time you want to tweak that recipe, it's going to cost you both time and money. And what's going to end up happening is that your cake is not nearly going to be as good as it could be because you simply can't afford to play with the recipe. This is exactly the world that material scientists face today. Wouldn't it be great if there was some way to predict how all the elements in the periodic table interacted? This is where my research comes in. Using a computer, I'm trying to create a cookbook that scientists and engineers can use when developing new materials. So that if there ever were a chop for scientists and engineers, they could use my cookbook to completely ruin any suspense of the show, as everyone would be able to predict exactly what would be made. And the method that I use to create these cookbooks is called CalFed. So let's take a look at what one of these cookbooks looks like. Up here is something that we call a phase diagram. And it is something that is a central tool for all material scientists to use. And it tells us what material is made when we combine two different elements. In fact, if you take a look at the word CalFed, it actually stands for Calculation of Phase Diagram. So my job is to create these all day. Now this one is for copper and nickel. And in order to read it, all we need to do is pick a composition. So let's say 50% nickel and a temperature, 1600 Kelvin. I see that I'm up here on the top in this blue region here in this blue region here. And what that tells me is that anywhere in this blue region, I'm gonna have a material that is a liquid. Intuitively, this makes sense. We know that as we heat things up, things generally melt. But if I drop the temperature to say 800 degrees, I'm in this red zone here. here. And what that tells me is that any material in this red zone is actually gonna be a solid. The last zone is simply going to be a mix of both liquid and solid. Why does this matter? Well, let's say that we have an airplane part that's made up of copper and nickel. I can use this phase diagram to predict what will be made at what temperature. Airplanes can get extremely hot, and it doesn't take a material scientist to know that a liquid airplane doesn't fly very well. So it's incredibly important that we know where these boundaries are. Now, my research has to do with silicon and silicon-based materials. So a question might be, what material is made when I combine silicon and chromium? The old way of doing this would be to take a whole bunch of different materials with different amounts of silicon, raise and lower the temperature, and measure what you have. And in fact, this is exactly what we have here. Each of those points represents a different material at a different temperature. But what you should really be looking at is that each of these points represents time and money that goes into creating this material and doing an experiment on it. And if you take a look here, Despite the fact that we have a lot of time and money in this phase diagram, we don't have the whole picture. We see that there are some zones here, but if we try to make the other boundaries, 
yeah, we could put lines there, but the truth is, we're not exactly sure. However, using CalFed, I can take these data points along with others, and I can interpolate in between the lines to create the phase diagram that I'm interested in. But this is only one power of CalFed. And another extremely powerful tool is the fact that it can predict what the phase diagram will look like when you add other elements. So again, I'm looking at silicon elements, and if I want to add one element to silicon, there are over 100 elements in the periodic table. That means there are over 100 different combinations that I can choose from. This might seem like a large number, but graduate students like me have been working on this for a long time. A lot of these phase diagrams have been made already. But if you're only adding one element, your material is not going to be too interesting. What happens when I want to add two elements? Well, that number drastically increases to over 6,000 different combinations. And again, I can use CalFed to predict what each of those phase diagrams looks like. And again, only two elements added to silicon, not too interested in the material. If I go up to three elements, that number drastically increases to over 230,000 different combinations. Again, this can be predicted through CalFed. So in summary, I use a method called CalFed to create a recipe book that uses the elements of the periodic table as ingredients so that when you're making new materials, you can save both time, money, and without ever putting tequila and cuttlefish near your mouth. Thank you.